into Miami were rejected, sanctioned, and told that they couldn't succeed. They were quickly branded the losers of the MLS, as they didn't win a major trophy and kept on getting eliminated in the playoffs. Now, since 2023, Inter Miami have had an incredible run. They won their first ever major trophy, the League's Cup in 2023, and the MLS Supporter Shield in 2024. Now, I know what you're thinking, but as you'll come to see later in the video, Inter Miami's success goes far beyond Messi. We aren't saying he isn't an influential figure for the team, both on and off the pitch. When he joined them in July 2023, Inter Miami were down in the dumps. He's been an amazing player for them. But from their history, Inter Miami are the kind of club to not give up easily and would have eventually achieved success no matter who they managed to lure from Europe. But yes, the easy answer to the question is Lionel Messi. When the Argentine joined, he inevitably and significantly helped the club reach their target of being a global club. He helped raise their financial profile with ticket and jersey sales, but where they needed him the most was on the pitch. And it was when Messi joined that Inter Miami won their first trophy in 2023. His performances during that League's Cup campaign were sensational and what was expected of a superstar player. On his debut, which was in the League's Cup, Messi scored a match-winning free kick in stoppage time. I mean, come on! Weeks later, Inter Miami beat Nashville in the final on penalties. When David Beckham and the other Miami owners wanted to name the club, they chose the name Club Internacional de Football Miami, or Inter Miami for short. They decided to go with the Inter tag because they wanted a name that would represent the team's international brand and the diversity of their host city, Miami. The idea of Inter Miami as a football club began when FC Barcelona and Marcelo Claure, a Miami-based Bolivian businessman, announced plans for a new club in October 2008. They planned that this new club would begin to play by 2011 and would use the FIU Stadium, which was the ground for a college football team. Now, unfortunately, the MLS and Barcelona announced that Miami wouldn't be the home of the new club due to unfavorable local market conditions. The MLS claimed that the people of Miami didn't have an interest in supporting a football team and that the FIU Stadium wouldn't be a suitable ground for a professional club. So, just like that, Inter Miami was rejected and had died before it even began. However, Marcelo Claure wouldn't give up. Even the MLS commissioner, Don Garber, hinted that Miami was a prospect for the future. He kept on looking for those who would bring life to a team in Miami. The question at the time was who would take part in such a risky move. Well, it was David Beckham who made the pioneering move. After an illustrious career, Beckham chose to sign for LA Galaxy in 2007. Beck's saw an opportunity in the MLS and was interested in making the league have a global outreach like the Premier League, La Liga and Ligue 1, not to mention a sizable pay packet in the last years of his career. So when he was about to sign his deal with LA Galaxy, Beckham received advice from business manager Simon Fuller. Fuller suggested that Beckham should ask for a clause that would allow him to buy an MLS team for $25 million when he retired. So when Beckham retired in 2013, the MLS held discussions with Fuller about several cities where they could set up a club, including Miami as Don Garber declared that the MLS had great interest in a team being in Miami. Out of the cities discussed, Beckham and Fuller were looking at the potential of buying an MLS team in Miami, and by December 2013, Garber acknowledged that the two were potential owners of a football club in Miami. Now all they needed were investors. With Garber's announcement, Claure joined Beckham and Fuller, and Beckham exercised his option of buying a club on February the 5th, 2014. Unfortunately, there was another problem they needed to solve. The issue of Inter Miami Stadium, which the city of Miami was negotiating with Beckham and his peers on. Garber let Beckham and his group know if they can't produce a stadium plan as demanded by their city, their move for a club in Miami would not be approved. 
the plans for Inter Miami died as none of the group's stadium proposals were accepted. So what was next? Fuller introduced Beckham to Jorge and Jose Mas, the Miami-based leaders of telecommunications and construction companies. They were also joined by founder and CEO of SoftBank, Masayoshi Son. Eventually, the group agreed with Miami on a stadium plan, and by January 29th, 2018, they became an MLS team who would begin to play from the 2020 season at Chase Stadium. Before then, the Financial Times reported that Fuller sold his interest in David Beckham's business in 2019 for a reported £50 million. Inter Miami appointed former CF Monterey manager Diego Alonso as their first coach and were not off to a bright start in 2020. They lost their first official match against Los Angeles FC 1-0. They also lost their second game, but this time they scored their first ever goal as a club through midfielder Rodolfo Pizarro. Pizarro, who the club had almost gotten into trouble for signing, was proving to be worth the fuss. When Inter Miami signed him, his club, Monterey, petitioned FIFA to investigate a wrongful contact between Pizarro and Beckham while he was still under contract with them. Inter Miami didn't get into trouble and Pizarro proved to be an important player for the squad by the end of the season. Although, it wasn't as if Inter Miami were spectacular that season. Even the signing of veteran striker Gonzalo Higuain and Blaise Matuidi didn't change the club's fortunes that season. Even Matuidi's signing got Inter Miami in trouble again, but more of that later on. They had their first win in August, but Higuain and Matuidi didn't make the playoffs as they were 10th on the Eastern Conference League table and 19th in the overall MLS table and did not win any silverware. There was some disappointment around this table finish among the owners, despite for a new team, 10th seeming pretty respectable, right? But the owners were not satisfied and were striving for more. So something had to change. The club parted ways with their head coach in 2021 and hired Phil Neville. Now at this time, Jorge and Jose Mas also bought out Masayoshi's son and Claure to bring the ownership of Inter Miami to three. The club also strengthened their squad by signing former Arsenal fullback Kieran Gibbs. But still, Inter Miami were unimpressive on the pitch and even performed worse than they did in the 2020 season. In that 2021 season, they lost 13 times out of 34, and in this one, they lost. 17 times, half of their games. And then the league sanctioned the club, co-owner Jorge Mas and former sporting director Paul McDonough for breach of MLS rules when they signed Matuidi. And this brings us to the designated player rule, or the Beckham rule. Now this rule allows MLS teams to sign three international players on a wage above the salary cap or with a transfer fee. The club didn't use a designated player slot for Matuidi, and this was what earned them their sanction. But still, they stuck to their philosophy of signing veterans from the top European leagues who were past their prime or out of form. They signed DeAndre Yedlin in February 2022 on a four-year deal. Investment in the club seemed to be paying off, with Higuain, who was back in form that season and who helped them reach the playoffs, scoring 16 goals in 28 games for them that season. Now, unfortunately, they lost in the first round of the playoffs. Losing wasn't strange to Inter Miami, and it was their first playoff in the two years of their existence. The expectation was that they would perform better in the 2023 season, but they didn't. As at June, they were dead last on the table and had to part ways with Phil Neville. The club then signed none other than Lionel Messi and his former Barcelona teammates Sergio Busquets and Jordi Alba soon after. Now this only happened due to Barcelona's struggles. Simply put, Messi left Barcelona because the club didn't have enough of a wage budget left to offer him a new contract. He entered in the summer of 2021 as a free agent, but it was widely believed it would only be a matter of time before he signed a new deal with the La Liga side. However, this never managed to happen 
despite Messi offering to cut his pay significantly. The club even made a move for Suarez, but were unsuccessful. Inter Miami also hired former Barca manager Gerardo Martino as the new coach after Neville left. There was much to do for the coach and the new signings, and they were able to achieve silverware that season, and the expectations were immense for the 2024 season, especially as Suarez signed in December 2023. Three footballing greats and old friends were now with Messi in Miami. Luis Suarez is one of the best strikers of this generation, many saying he is the best. After all, he did win three league titles and a Champions League with Barcelona. Jordi Alba helped Barca win six La Liga titles and the Champions League in 2015 while winning Euro 2012 and the 2023 Nations League with Spain. Alba's fellow Spaniard Busquets won nine La Ligas, three Champions Leagues, a World Cup and a Euros with Spain and, who is now 35, had already made the switch to the United States Major League Soccer. Messi and Busquets, who signed deals until 2025, were presented to a cheering crowd of around 20,000 Inter-Miami fans at the club's DRV PNK Stadium on Sunday, flanked by co-owner and ex-England captain David Beckham. And with these footballing legends at the club, it will only be easier to attract more class players from around the world to the club in order to get a chance to play with these legends, who are part of what many, including Gary Neville, consider one of the greatest football sides ever. Now, for more on Barcelona and their excellent start to the new season, subscribe to the channel as this video is just around the corner. In the 2024 season, Inter Miami were a team transformed. While Messi played a key part in their transformation, it wasn't just him. The team made improvements in key areas of the pitch, one of them being the defensive midfield, as they signed promising young defensive midfielder Federico Redondo. Not quite as good as Messi and Suarez for the club, but this was still huge. When they went to represent their countries in the Copper America 2024, the team continued to play well without them. Inter Miami won five out of the six they played in the duo's absence. Leo Campagna and Robert Taylor thrived in the stable presence of Busquets and Alba and set the team on a path to victory. They've won the MLS Supporters' Shield trophy and are eyeing the MLS Cup after winning the playoffs. Will they be able to achieve this? Well, the team is even eager to set a new points record in the MLS by being the first team to surpass New England's revolution record of 72 points. Will they set a new record in the league? They're in the form of their lives right now and under the coaching of Martino, Inter Miami feel like a team and don't have to only play well because of a central figure. Do you think Inter Miami is a one-man show or are they a proper team? Where would this Inter-Miami team finish after 38 games in the Prem?